Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Today, since there is no 2021 ATA show, I had to get a little creative. I went down to my local shop to try out some of the new flagship level bows that have not been released yet for 2021. So I hope you enjoyed this review, and if you would like to see others from the flagships of some of the major companies for 2021, I will put those links to that playlist in the description below, and you can check those out as well so you can make a good buying decision. All right, so today we're talking Bowtech and its brand new offerings for 2021. Now, early or late rather in 2020 they introduced the solution sd here in 2021 they've released the solution which is a 32 inch model and the solution ss now the solution is their speed bow the ss i'm going to say is their super smooth bow and then both of them are going to apply to different spoils of archers although i have a feeling that more are going to gravitate towards the ss i know that i definitely did in my short testing so let's dive into these bows let's throw some specs up on the screen and let's talk about how I enjoyed them in their shooting process. So we'll start with a longer axle to axle bow, which is the Solution, which is also their speed bow. And both these bows do come with their flip disc technology, and I shot both of them on their comfort setting for the flip disc. Now that flip disc has been around for a very long time for Bowtech. It's universally accepted that the performance setting is incredibly rough on the draw cycle, regardless of what bow has had that flip disc technology. Very short valley, uh, very low let off percentage, and a pretty rough on the draw cycle, but you do gain about eight to 10 feet per second, depending on what your draw length and poundage is. And that's pretty significant just with the flip of a module. So if you're not really worried about that, you can go ahead and try out the performance side of the flip disc. From the factory though, it will come with the comfort setting. So the solution is their speed bow. It's 32 inches axle to axle, about a six inch brace height, which is pretty normal for most hunting bows these days. And definitely on the shorter end of the hunting bow spectrum when it comes to brace height. Mass weight's right around where you'd want about 4.3 pounds and the draw lengths are going to cover basically everybody except for me or anybody over about 6364 goes from 25 to 30 inches and this is another reason why I gravitated towards the SS because it goes to 31 but we'll give it its time here in a second let's talk a little bit more about the solution and how I found it to shoot and how I found it to hold in the hand and how I felt that it shot afterwards with a little bit of vibration or none whatsoever let's dive into it because this bow is hoping would be a little bit better offering as a speed bow I'm not a speed bow guy. I've never enjoyed a speed bow. I've never liked something that really tried to push the IBOs high 340s, low 350s. I've never enjoyed the draw cycle on it. And unfortunately, the solution for me was just the same. This one was absolutely very stiff, one of the stiffest of the year. Now granted, it's trying to get a high performance out of it and it kind of harkens back to some of the older Bowtex like the Insanity, the CPXL, the uh, 3, RPM 360, kind of has the same cam design to it as well. And Bowtex not gonna make any you know apologies for it and I wouldn't either, that's their Speedbow offering and if you're not interested in it, you can go with the SS which is a much slower and smoother draw cycle but if you're into trying out a little bit more speed you maybe you have a short draw maybe you want to have a short draw and you want to shoot a little heavier poundage and try to extend and make this a crossover bow 32 inches isn't that half bad of an idea to become a crossover bow you can shoot a little bit more speed for 3d where you're shooting just a shot every now and then it's not that big of a deal but in when it's 20 degrees outside and i need to take the shot whether it's a doe or a buck of a lifetime i do not want a super rough draw cycle when i'm all cold and stiff in the shoulder and I won't lie I got about half a dozen shots in and I stopped enjoying shooting the bow and I love shooting bows but it wasn't that enjoyable and even though I was shooting it at 70 pounds which isn't my normal thing I like to shoot around 60 pounds it still was not enjoyable at that 30 inch draw length now of course Bowtech has been using their deadlock cam technology which we see here again it's a three track binary cam system with the shimmable right on the axle which in my opinion second to elite set technology and their tunable roller guard as well as a limb stop and a cable stop option with elite Bowtech is a very close second to all the tunability that you need out of a bow you do have a tunable roller guard and you do have the shimble axle and it's available now on all of their bows that's pretty daggum slick and anybody who's used them in that deadlock cam technology has said the same thing that they've said
said about sec technology for elite once you set it it does not move which is awesome because sometimes when you get proprietary technology like that it will start to shift and work around on you and that is not something you want Botech has been using it it's a great addition I'm glad it's part of the lineup and it makes tuning a snap tuning a breeze when we have to work on a bow like that in the shop after the shot the bow wasn't too bad it was a little bit on the vibey side and not a pitchfork vibey a, a more of a shuddering vibe which again these bows are not set up with stabilizers or any other type of string silencing material so they're just bare bones as is and no one shoots a compound bow these days without some sort of deadening technique so I'm sure with a stabilizer setup that will rectify itself right out of the gate however and we'll talk about the SS in a second there was none whatsoever so granted this is a speed bow like I keep saying and I'm sorry to beat that dead horse but speed bows expect to have a little bit of vibe after the shot it's just a trade-off you got a lot of energy coming out of that bow you can use a heavier arrow to try to absorb it get a little bit more speed down range with that setup and as a hunting bow if you can crank back 50 60 70 pounds and you want to try to enjoy a little bit more speed I really think this would be a great bow offering for you all right so let's talk about the solution SS which ironically is like a little brother to the solution yet it still has the ability to go to a longer draw length I don't get it and I like it a little bit more actually I like it a lot more we'll throw the specs up on the screen but you have a 30 inch axle to axle bow and I have said this to many people in the shop when I shot this bow if they offered this bow in a 33 or 34 inch I think this bow would make a phenomenal crossover bow and really just a phenomenal hunting bow in general from particularly if you have a 29 30 or this cam will go to a 31 inch draw length so the solution only goes to a 30 even at a longer axle to axle this one at the shorter axle to axle of 30 inches goes to a 31 inch draw length. so I was able to set this bow up Basically, as I would shoot it, 31 inch draw length and 60 pounds, and it shot great. I was super pleased with how this bow worked, both during the shot and after. Solution has a six inch brace height, and the SS has a seven inch brace height, which is really what I prefer. I like a six and a half and up inch brace height. When you start getting down to six, you start kind of sacrificing what you want out of speed and start sacrificing, for me, at least how I shoot performance. I do much better with that six and a quarter, six and a half and up brace heights and that works really well for me that's why I typically shoot elite because they have more generous brace heights they're not so much worried about speed and Bowtech does a great job with that as well the SS still has the same deadlock cam technology is still a tunable roller guard with the flexus thing that Bowtech has had for years nothing has changed there this bow, however, just shot so much better than the solution. It's a much smoother draw cycle, a much cleaner feel, and there is no vibe whatsoever. I was very impressed. No vibe whatsoever with the bow that I shot in the shop out of this Bowtech Solution SS. Very clean in the hand. It just stayed right there which is not something I get a lot with Bowtech. In Bowtechs of the past, I've gotten a little bit of vibe, maybe a little bit of jump, but this one worked really well. The last year, the Realm uh, X also had this same type of feel, although it was a little bit punchier, but I'm going to blame that on ATA. I got there uh, late on in ATA, and I'll guarantee you the hundreds, if not thousands, of shots that was put through that bow. Strings were stretched a little bit, cam timing was off, and it probably wasn't feeling right. But this one's brand new, almost out of the box, and it was doing a really good job of spitting arrows down range. Now, like I said, Said, this one was at 60 pounds and the solution was at 70 pounds so is it a fair apples to apples comparison maybe not perfectly but it definitely was e on smoother there was no hump there was no initial really hard buildup which again you would expect out of a much super smooth bow compared to the speed one in the solution also it's nice to see from Bowtech they still have a rotating module with a pin system so it stays contacts in place and also as someone who just works on Bowtech just in general as a side note in the past they've usually as a dealer they've hidden the module I guess they put the modules on when it's in a press and the cam can spin freely I don't know what they do but they would put it on 28 inches or 29 inches directly from the factory and one of the three uh, little bolts that holds the module into the cam was always hidden behind the limb so you always had to press the bow move the cam freely take that one screw out then take the bow out of the press it was a mess this one right out of the box didn't have to do that kudos to you Bowtech awesome for you as someone who works in a shop I didn't have to put a bow in a press just to move the module so that's fantastic but it's set up super simple just like you would expect with the rotating module system and uh, the nice thing also too with Bo Bowtech this year is that they've started to make their draw stops their string stops they don't have a uh, limb stop option their string stops their cable stops are much wider they're much bigger it's just a bigger rounder peg in the past they've used these really tiny it's like almost like a brad nail type uh, cable stop and when you get that really tiny 
tiny thing on that string, it really allows for really a cute pinch and you get a spongier in the back wall. Whereas you have this bigger peg, it's, that it's not as acute and you get a little bit firmer back wall with the cable stop. Now I'm a limb stop shooter, that's why I keep shooting Elite and until Elite gets rid of limb stops, I'm gonna keep doing that. But that it was so much nicer to have that much firmer back wall because I just don't like any sponge back there. Now, if you like a spongy back wall, there still is definitely some give with a cable stop. I've never had a cable stop bow that didn't move at all, but Bowtech definitely uh, beefed it up a little bit, which is nice and adds a little bit firmer back wall, which I think in today's industry just needs to happen. All right, so that's all for this video. If you have any questions on the Solution or the Solution SS or any of the other bows that I reviewed this year, Follow links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, send me an email, or even leave a comment here on YouTube. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.